As the um, population of the developed Western world, the United States, have um, gotten larger, literally more obese, we see a rise in the incidence of fatty liver disease. Just as one can get fat deposited in any other tissue, fat can deposit in the liver. And in some people, that fat causes inflammation, damage to the liver, can lead to scarring of the liver, and that can eventually lead to cirrhosis and death in some people. Um, fatty liver disease itself is probably very common. Maybe 20% of the population have some fat in the liver, but there's a, only a proportion of them that are at risk of liver disease progression. And that's what we hepatologists spend our time doing, is trying to figure out among our patients, which are the ones that are at risk? Which are the ones that, uh, are, uh, are, that already have some scarring of the liver? Uh, and then how do we prevent that? How do we treat that and prevent them from needing liver transplants or from getting liver cancer? And the fat accumulates in the liver for a number of reasons. A lot of them have to do with what we eat. A lot of it's genetic, unfortunately, and so it's usually like a lot of complex diseases, a combination of our environment, which means what we eat, how much we exercise, and our underlying genetic makeup that predisposes to fat accumulation in the liver. Some of the dietary factors that are very important, probably one of the most important is just sugar-sweetened beverages. You know, I think we all get too much sugar in our diet these days and the sugar that comes in table sugar and the high fructose corn syrup, a lot of that goes to the liver and is turned directly into fat. There are really no symptoms associated with uh, fatty liver disease that are specific. Many of the patients that we see are found incidentally uh, through blood tests. They, they have so-called raised liver enzyme counts. Their doctor might be ordering a blood test for some other reason, often to measure the effect of um, some of the medicines they're taking and it's noted that they have raised liver enzyme counts. So they are then sent to us to try to figure out why. And we typically will uh, do a series of tests to look for things like hepatitis B and hepatitis C and ask them about their alcohol consumption. But then when all of that has been excluded, what we're left with is probably fatty liver disease. And uh, we will sometimes do a liver biopsy to confirm that. Sometimes uh, x-rays, MRIs, ultrasounds can help us figure, that, figure out that diagnosis as well. The treatment of fatty liver disease right now is sort of tough in a way. And it's simple in the one sense that the number one treatment recommendation is what we call lifestyle modification. And I have my, fo my patients really focus on healthy eating habits, portion controls. You know, when we go out to restaurants, and they bring enough food for four people and put it in front of us. It's delicious food and we eat it. So we have to try to you know, have strategies to work around that. And so eating healthy portion amounts and then regular exercise when we can. Um, and we have good data to say that's all very effective. It pulls the fat out of the liver, the liver can heal and improve with that. The challenge, as we all know, is it's very difficult for people to adhere to this. You know, it's hard enough to achieve it, but then to sustain it over time, this is very much a challenge. So there's a lot of work being done right now on drug therapy and there's a lot of different medications in clinical trials. Some of them are in what we call phase three, which is the last stage before approval. It'll still be a couple of years before any of those get to the point where they might be approved. It depends on the results of the trials. And there's a huge number of medications in the earlier stages, the phase one and phase two trials. We're, ju we're just trying to get a hint if they have a benefit in people or not.